I'm Anne from Game Like a Mother. Today I'm going to provide an overview and review of Sequence for Kids. It's ages 3 to 6, 2 to 4 players, and it takes 15 minutes. Let me show you how to play. The goal of the game is to be the first to get a sequence of four of your own chips in a row on spots on the board, and then you are the winner. For game setup, we have a two-player game here. Each player has picked all of the chips of a particular color to put in front of them. We'll say this player's the dealer and they've given three cards to each player and they're face down. Uh, when I play with my three-year-old, her cards are never face down. They're always face up. That's how she likes to play. That is fine. Just let them play however they're comfortable. Then it doesn't have to be a secret if they don't want it to be. I'm going to flip them up so you can see what we're working with here. Uh, the person to the left of the dealer goes first and basically there's two of all of the animals pictured on this board in the deck, uh, along with a couple specialty cards. There's Ulysses, Ulysses the unicorn, and Dorothy the dragon. There's two of each of them, and they have special abilities. The dragon, you can remove another player's chip, and on the unicorn, you can place your chip on any space that you want. So those are really wonderful if you get them and all you do on a turn is you're going to place one of the animals that you already have so we'll say that this player chooses to place a tiger you can do the discard pile in front of you we usually like to do it by the draw pile and so they pick a spot to place it and then even if this person has a tiger card they cannot put it on this place there can only be one chip per spot and then they have a replacement card and that ends their turn. Now it's yellow's turn and all they do is the same thing. They pick one of their cards to play and they put, they pick whichever spot they want of those two spots on the board and they place a chip on it and draw a replacement card. And a key thing for this game as well is these free spaces. Uh, you don't have to, you have a chip on them in order for them to count for you. Uh, you just, it doesn't take a turn to place a chip on them. You just imagine in your head, oh, I already have a chip on this spot. And then if they get this at some point, then it would count as uh, their fourth spot in a sequence and they would win. And it doesn't matter if somebody else is using the same area. So if green was building up a sequence over here that they were working on, it wouldn't be reserved by green or by yellow. It's just whoever is building by it, if you get up to three that connects with one of these or diagonally, diagonally works too, then you would have four in a row and be the winner. So here's what the end of a game might look like. We'll say it's yellow's turn. They're going to play their tiger, draw a replacement card, and then it's green's turn and they see if they play their wolf card right here. They have a sequence of one, two, three, four in a row. So they would have made it to four in a row first and they would be the winner. So that's how to play sequence for kids. The target demographic for this game is little kids and parents who want to play a calm, mellow, happy game with their children that doesn't have any speed or loud, annoying element to it. This is calm, happy, peaceful. Uh, the rule complexity is so easy as it should be for a three-year-old game. Much appreciated. Uh, how competitive is this game? It can be very low level of competitive, especially if the child is playing with a parent. You can choose not to block them as they're going for four in a row. You can choose to not use your specialty cards. Uh, we have played this where the child was putting out cards at random and I wasn't able to end the game. I didn't have four animals that would go in a row and I thought, will this game ever end? Yes. Yes, it does. Even with zero strategy, eventually the child by mistake will end up with four in a row. Uh, and then you say, yay, good job. So they can play it on their own. You don't have to say, oh, come on, do this because we've been going on. We need to be done. It, it will end. Uh, and that's for ages three. They get, they catch on to the strategy pretty quickly. And so by the time you're playing with a four or five or six year old, they're not going to have a problem with that. The only time that I'd say, Ooh, this game that could be, get a little dicey is if you have like a four year old and a six year old playing it together. And the six year old is clued onto the strategy and it's blocking that four year old at every turn. Then 
then you might need to uh, watch it a little bit more to make sure it's still a happy, friendly game. But besides that, with a parent, you can make this as mellow as you like. Uh, the replay value is high just because it is such a classic game. The kids like the animal theme. The pieces are really fun to play around. And it is just calm and easy for the parents to play too. Nothing high energy here. You could be tired and sit down and play this with your kid. Uh, similar games, I assume if you like uh, this game that you will probably also like Mastermind for Kids, another classic geared for kids. That's ages uh, six and up, so it's a few years after this one, but it's a great one to move into once they've gotten this one down. And if you're just looking for another great three-year-old game with an animal theme, uh, Sneaky Snacky Squirrel is very popular, has very cute components. The three-year-old will go nuts over it. There really is very little strategy to speak of, but it's very satisfying for them to play and play with the components. So go and get your three-year-old a cute little game. This is a great one. Check it out. Thanks and see you next time from Game Like a Mother.